them as much as we can and i hope that they join us soon uh, so i don't think i need much introduction here uh, for rajiv rastogi from amazon so i think the word amazon says it all so uh, that is just my introduction for rajiv rajiv the floor is for you okay thank you uh, so i'm going to talk about uh, machine learning innovations that we've uh, come up with at uh, amazon in india so uh, you know there are numerous uh, applications of machine learning across uh, amazon's different e-commerce business verticals we are using uh, machine learning to recommend products to customers uh, we use machine learning to forecast future demand for products and also improve uh, the quality of our product catalog by classifying products as well as eliminating duplicate products in the catalog uh, we are also applying ml techniques to rank products uh, in search results reducing packaging costs um improving address quality and um uh mining product uh, design insights from reviews so i'm going to try and cover some of these applications uh, uh that my team at amazon here in bangalore uh is involved in so uh here's just a brief outline of some of the applications that i'll talk about and i'd like to start with uh, customer experience applications so now uh india has over 650 million internet users however a large fraction of these users have low digital maturity and are new to online shopping in fact in user studies we've received uh feedback from many of these users that they find our uh product pages to be cluttered with widgets and also they are very difficult to navigate so we've developed an a uh, machine learning model to predict customer proficiency based on user session features like browse patterns number of search queries and so on now more uh proficient customers tend to search more and so number of search queries is a good predictor of uh customer proficiency now the ml based customer proficiency signal is then used to rank widgets on the uh amazon.in website so for example you know uh for a customer with low proficiency we up rank uh language options uh onboarding tutorials and so on because these are people with less proficiency and for customers with higher proficiency we up rank you know ads uh or subscribe and save some other sign up uh widgets that we have within amazon and our uh, proficiency prediction model that we deployed uh resulted in a revenue lift of 0.27% uh, uh for uh, for 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 the company now um you know another application is um uh you know a lot of our uh, a large proportion of our customers um uh, issue uh, broad queries that describe only a product type so for example the query will just say sarees right and you can get hundreds of thousands of results for that query now we've implemented an ml algorithm that will recommend the top refinements and picker values for uh, these broad queries and these refinement options uh, help make it very easy for customers to narrow down the search results along uh, different product attributes for example it could be um, you know memory size for pen drives it could be material for apparel it could be uh, you know ram sizes for phones and so on so for example uh, for the keyword sarees this will enable customers to uh, refine their search uh, by the saree material with a rank list of pick uh, picker values like cotton georgette silk etc and see sarees of their choice and uh, this again this refinement recommendation so for example you know uh, the this algorithm to kind of refine your results by material or 
other, you know, for different product types, it's going to be a different set of re refinements. And this uh, resulted in a revenue lift of 0.15%. Again, I, 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 for all these applications, I'll talk a little bit about the business impact as well, just so that you get a sense of how uh, machine learning can actually be, you know, delivering to the top and bottom line of your business, right? We're also building a conversational shopping assistant uh, that, you know, is going to be very similar to a shopkeeper. In, uh, in India, a lot of your uh, uh, users, right, beyond the users, maybe in the big cities, uh, if you looked at the, you know, uh, towns and villages, people are very used to going into a shop, interacting with a shopkeeper, right? So this uh, will, this assistant will guide customers to the, uh, you know, to the products they are looking to buy uh, by narrowing down or refining uh, requirements in each step of the conversation. And also, um, you know, the assistant will answer uh, product-related questions that customers may have along their shopping journey. So, for example, uh, you know, let's say you have a customer looking for a smartphone. So, the assistant will proactively ask, what do you plan to use it for, right? And here, I, I, you know, the, the customer says, well, I want to record, um, record uh, TikTok videos, and the, the assistant can come back with a recommendation. It could also, you know, follow up with asking, you know, uh, do you have a certain price range in mind? Uh, the, you know, the assistant will also respond to upper funnel questions like what are the popular smartphone brands, for example. A lot of times customers want to know that. And also buying guides queries like, uh, you know, what should I look for when I'm buying uh, a smartphone? And here you can see the assistant uh, responding that the key smartphone features are things like the camera, camera display, processor, battery, OS storage, and so on. So let me move on to uh, the next set of applications in operations, right? And now, uh, you know, addresses in India are unstructured. Um, there are, uh, uh, we often, uh, you know, these addresses that we've seen on Amazon are incomplete with uh, critical fields like street names missing from the address. For example, uh, we've seen addresses on Amazon.in like such as you know, near Orion Mall, Malaysvaram, uh, Bangalore. Or uh, another address was near uh, bus stand, uh, Sambhaji Chowk Nasik, right? Now, these incomplete addresses hurt the productivity of our delivery associates. DAs are required to call the customer to locate the address. And then there are, you know, addresses with spelling errors, and uh, we've even seen uh, addresses with missing spaces. So you can see that particular address there which doesn't have spaces and it's very difficult to tokenize and locate such addresses. So to uh, identify uh, poor quality and incomplete addresses uh, that are difficult to locate and deliver to, we've come up with the notion of an address deliverability score. And uh, uh, essentially uh, for each address, an ADS captures the degree of completeness of an address with more uh, complete addresses having higher ADS scores. So for example, you can see that the address in the first row of the table here, uh, which is uh, Maleswaram West, uh, has a low ADS score of five. But once you add building name, street name, floor information, landmark, and a whole bunch of other things, the ADS score goes up to 89. Now, how do we compute uh, these ADS scores, right? For, for an input address, we compute ADS based on the similarity between the address and similar addresses uh, to which we have successfully delivered packages. So there are a lot of, uh, you know, we do uh, millions of packages, uh, package deliveries. So we know a lot of addresses where we were successful in delivering packages. So we just have to measure the similarity of this incoming address with all those addresses where we have uh, delivered packages to. And uh, uh, essentially for junk addresses uh, with low ADS scores, we do soft intercepts at address creation time, and these have reduced instances of address not found by 50%. So 50%, uh, you know, uh, the number of times where our delivery associates couldn't locate our address, that went down by 50%. Um, you know, we have seen customers complaining about um, damaged products 
and also excessive product packaging, right? This is not only wasteful and bad for the environment, but it also increases our packaging and concessions costs. Now, uh, this slide shows uh, different types of packaging uh, arranged in increasing order of costs, right? So the packaging types on the right, like corrugated boxes, are more expensive, but they also uh, lead to fewer damages and lower concessions. So essentially you have a trade-off between uh, packaging costs and concessions, right? So here again, we use machine learning to select the optimal packaging type for each, um, uh, for each product that would minimize the total cost of packaging and concessions paid for damaged shipments. So, uh, you know, our ML-based approach will reduce concessions costs by selecting a robust packaging type like a corrugated box, for example, for products that are more susceptible to damage. On the other hand, um, you know, uh, for products that are less prone to damage, it selects an inexpensive uh, packaging material like poly bag, uh, and that helps to reduce packaging material costs, right? And uh, this model has been applied to hundreds of thousands of Amazon packages, and uh, you know it's reduced shipment damage by 24% while actually reducing shipping costs uh, by 5%. So we've got both the damages coming down as well as shipping and packaging material costs coming down using machine learning. And this is an interesting application you know, quality is a key driver for food, uh, fruit and vegetable purchasing decisions, and it's also a critical factor for customer satisfaction. Now, you know, having humans grade the quality of fruits and vegetables by manually e examining each individual piece of produce is not really scalable to millions of quality assessments uh, per day. So we've, um, uh, you know, built a computer vision based grading solution um, uh, you know that analyzes produce images uh, to detect defects like cuts um, cracks uh, pressure damage and so on right um, and we also plan to uh, develop an AI enabled auto grader machine uh, to grade produce that is moving and rotating on a conveyor belt driven system that's equipped with cameras. So here I have a video of the of what that autograder machine will look like. So this is something that we are building. You can see all the fruits and vegetables are moving on this conveyor belt and they're moving, uh, you know, also rotating on the conveyor belt. And this module in the middle has cameras that's taking images of the produce as they're moving and uh, shipping it to our, sending it to our computer vision models that would then grade the produce, detect defects, of different kinds and, um, and, and uh, uh, you know, help to make sure that we are shipping high quality products to our customers, right? And this is something that uh, we are in the process of building and we hope to launch in one of our fulfillment centers uh, this year. Now at scale, uh, the auto grader will improve uh, quality and consistency uh, while reducing uh, per unit grading cost by 78% compared to manual grading. So this is not only going to be something that will help to bring down costs, but it will also, uh, you know, make sure that it's consistent because humans make a lot of errors. So automating this will also have that benefit of making sure that we have fewer errors when we are grading fresh produce. So let me move on uh, to catalog quality. So the Amazon product catalog in India has over 200 million products. Um, now, uh, you know, since sellers are required um, to populate product metadata on our marketplace, some of our product listings end up having defects. And uh, these product list, poor quality product listings can, you know, erode customer trust. It could uh, lead to lower conversions and uh, sales. It could lead to excessive returns and so on. So here again, we use machine learning techniques to uh, identify and fix uh, catalog defects at scale. So let me show a couple of different types of defects. So this slide here shows defects involving mismatches 
between product attributes like title and image, right? So you can see here the title says that the product is a t-shirt, but the image shows a bag, right? In the other case here, you can see that the title says that the color of the product is blue, but the product image shows a pink dress, right? So if you were a customer, uh, you wouldn't know whether uh, you would receive a pink dress or a blue dress, and most likely you won't place the order for the product, right? Um, now, in some cases, attribute values like color may be missing uh, for a product in the catalog, and this can hurt uh, search refinement experience. So, for example, here, this orange dress shown here gets dropped from uh, the search results uh, when the customer applies the orange-yellow color filter because the attribute value orange for the dress is missing um, in, the, in the catalog. Um, so, uh, you know, a key capability to uh, identify and correct, um, uh, correct these defects is the ability to extract um, add structured attributes like color, size, uh, material, uh, brand from product titles, um, descriptions, and images, right? Uh, and we use deep neural networks to uh, extract attribute values. Now, our models for text rely on the context around each word to label it with the relevant attribute. So, for example, here, um, you know, the word aqua in the first title uh, is a, refers to a brand, but uh, the, the same word aqua in the second title is a color, right? Uh, similarly, extracting uh, color from uh, product images can be tricky. Now, in this image, um, you know, uh, the color of the sandal is blue, even though it has some yellow, and the sole is gray, right? So our deep learning models have to be able to uh, figure that out, that, the, you know, this is a blue sandal, and, you know, whatever is gray here is, um, is actually the sole of the, of the sandal. Uh, so here again, uh, our attribute extraction models, um, you know, have backfilled missing attribute values for millions of products, and this has uh, uh, increased our refinement coverage by 955 BIPs. Uh, you know, these models have also fixed uh, color and size mismatch <coughs> mismatches for thousands of products. We've also um, been able to um, develop ML models to detect over 25 types of image defects, like uh, celebrity faces in images. By Amazon policy, you can't have models that are celebrities, right? So, um, uh, so being able to identify, well, this face is that of a celebrity uh, is, a, you know, is, again, something where we use machine learning. Uh, Non-white uh, backgrounds, uh, cropped faces, poor quality images, right? So our image defect detection models have uh, corrected or suppressed uh, thousands of products with defective images, right? And uh, this has, again, <coughs> helped to reduce the image uh, defect rate of products by 727 BIPs. Uh, now, uh, more than 20, um, you know, more than 50% uh, of product searches start on Amazon. And uh, here again, we are using machine learning algorithms to rank search results and surface relevant results uh, to customers. Um, now, a product type defect occurs when the product type of the search query is different from that of a product in the search result, right? So for a query like Apple iPhone, this uh, product accessory shown here uh, has a product type defect because its product type is different from the search query, right? It's an accessory, it's not a phone. While these different iPhone models don't have product type uh, defects, right? So we've come up with a product type defect score uh, that predicts the likelihood of a product type defect given a query product pair, and we use this score, we leverage this score in search ranking to demote products with product type defects in search results. And this has, again, helped, uh, you know, product type defect uh, aware ranking 
has reduced surge defect rate by 213 BIPs. Now, uh, you know, you know that Indian customers have strong regional preferences. A uh, customer uh, searching for sari in Gujarat may be, uh, you know, interested in a bandhani, which is popular in that state, while a customer in Karnataka issuing the same query sari may be looking for a Mysore silk, you know, which is popular in, in that region. Now, to surface um, a regionally popular and relevant products in search results, we've added uh, a feature called regional sales velocity to, to our search ranking. And regional sales velocity here is the number of units sold for a product within a region, right? So it's just the regional popularity of the product, and we use that as a feature because that's very predictive of conversions, which is what our search algorithms try to optimize. And adding this regional sales velocity feature in search uh, has again increased product revenues by 0.69%. We're also working on personalizing search results uh, to show more branded products uh, to, um, uh, to in our search results to brand conscious customers, right? Specifically here, we have developed an ML model that can uh, estimate brand customer affinity scores using customer purchase patterns. So we are, we're trying to estimate what is the likelihood that this customer is going to purchase a product from this brand, right, based on historical purchases by that customer. And then we are going to, you know, we want to try and personalize the results to show the customers more products from brands that they have a high affinity uh, towards, right? So, for example, you can see that, um, you know, on the left is a brand conscious customers and we show them more branded shirts from, you know, brands like U.S. Polo and Peter England and, uh, you know, some other uh, 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 brands here. But for value conscious customers, we show very few uh, uh, shirts uh, that are branded products. And, uh, and finally, you know, one of the uh, problems that we had was uh, in our sponsored product ads, we had very little coverage due to, um, you know, a, a few matching ads for search queries. So one way to increase uh, our ads coverage was to find semantically related queries and then show ads for those queries. So, for example, here we reformulate the query uh, geezer to water heater and then show, which is semantically related, and then show water heater ads for the query geezer, right? Similarly, you can... Uh, reformulate chapels to sl slippers and then show slippers uh, as a product for a query like chapels just because you may not have uh, a match on just chapels so you want to expand the set of keywords using uh, query uh, reformulation or if there's a query like purse for men you can reformulate it as men's wallet and then show uh, products that are men's wallet products for that uh, for that particular query and we used, again, deep neural networks here to learn semantic embeddings for queries and products, leveraging product purchases and clicks, um, and, uh, you know, uh, uh, query pairs that have very similar embeddings, we use those to reformulate queries. And this, again, uh, you know, helped us Im improve our, our sponsored product ad revenues by 4.33%. The last topic that I wanted to touch was on um, really gaining product design insights from, um, from reviews. So product uh, designers are, uh, you know, looking for insights about the key aspects of a product that, uh, you know, customers may care about. Uh, they're also, they also want to know how do users rate a product on different aspects. So for example, you know, uh, this slide here shows some of the key aspects of a trolley in the luggage category, right? So you can see that uh, the handle, uh, uh, zip, lock, wheels, uh, quality, material, price, look, weight, color, these are all important aspects of a trolley that customers actually care about. Now, customer reviews contain a wealth of information about products. Uh, 
you know, they capture user feedback and sentiment about different product um, aspects. These can provide insights into product aspects that customers care about. So for example, here's an example review. Uh, and you can see that it uh, has mentions of many aspects here. You can, there's uh, the look, uh, handle, color, price, space, and so on, right? And uh, some of these snippets uh, have a positive sentiment uh, about the product aspect. So for example, you can see uh, nice, sleek looks, a sturdy handle. So these are all, you know, a positive sentiment. And we have, uh, I've circled those with green. And then there are some snippets with a negative sentiment about the aspect. For example, uh, you know, doubts about the long-term durability and so on. Now we can aggregate the sentiment information across all the reviews to actually come up with fine-grained ratings for product aspects. So for example, here you can see, so here you can see the different uh, aspect ratings. Uh, there's positive ratings for things like uh, price and quality, and there's a negative rating for uh, the lock aspect, and this particular trolley didn't have a TSA lock, and so uh, there was a lot of negative sentiment from customers on the lock uh, aspect here. And uh, so, uh, again, you know, mining, uh, manually sifting through thousands of reviews to gauge user sentiment for product aspects can be tedious and time-consuming, so to come up with product design insights at scale for millions of products, we actually built a, uh, a tool uh, that can discover product aspects and also uh, you know, mine user sentiment for each aspect using natural language understanding and sentiment analysis techniques. Clearly, a lot of this can be used by manufacturers to come up with new designs that would delight customers. Uh, customers can also, uh, this will also be helpful to customers in terms of making customer, uh, you know, purchases. And the product design insights tool has been used by 350 plus selling partners to drive over 5,000 product uh, launches. So I just want to conclude now and uh, just say that, you know, there are a lot, lots and lots of applications of machine learning and AI in e-commerce. Uh, at Amazon, we virtually use machine learning uh, in every vertical of our business here. So with that, I'm happy to take questions. Thank you. Thank you, Rajiv. So <laughs> questions, yes? <laughs> oh my god. Okay, I, I think that gentleman stood first, so I, I get to give it to him. Thank you, thank you. Uh, m my name is K.S. Gopal. I am a CEO of Silk Mark Organization of India, which works under Ministry of Textiles, Government of India. Uh, I have got a couple of questions, not only to Amazon, but to other e-commerce platform also. I think these questions would be relevant to them also. Uh, when in the search engine you put the sari or the silk, so there are, there are silks available right from 299 rupees to 20,000 rupees. So, so our, our, our issue is that, from a consumer side, I am putting this question to you. Say, Amazon or any other e-commerce platform being such a um, big partner, uh, almost the, the biggest partner we can say, why can't the Amazon develop uh, such keywords, uh, say whenever we buy silk or gold, the purity is the main aspect in that. Uh, because we are emotionally connected to the silk. When we are interested to buy pure silk product, why can't you should uh, offer the pure silk product only under that category? Say for example, I write pure silk, but pure silk doesn't come at all. So can the Amazon develop some uh, through ML or I don't know the technology. Technolo technologically, I'm very weak in that. I sure. can't comment on that. Yeah. Number one question. Number two questions. Second, only two questions I'll put that. There are uh, many, many suspecting consumers. Uh, say, for example, in silk, it's a very high value item, number one. AJ consumers, there are many uh, unscrupulous consumers also because they buy silk they order silk on the Amazon or Mintra or any other e-commerce platform. Then while returning policy, Amazon has got a returning policy for about, I, I think, one month window. Mostly one month window in apparel and garment. So consumers uh, don't return the right kind of product. Yeah. And sometimes half of the product is reached. For example, if there is a sari, only yeah. blouse pieces will be returned and sari, main sari will be kept there. So can e-commerce platform come out with some ML or some technology yeah. 
so that it can be minimized and those uh, issues can be addressed. Thank you very yeah. much. No, both your problems, uh, in fact, uh, we do work on these problems. My team does work on both problems. The first problem is really around, again, and I did address that in my talk, uh, if somebody searched for <coughs> saris, we will show them options on the left to, uh, you know, and I, I, I caught in, I, I actually meant to refine their results. If they want, they can go with cotton, georgette, silk, many different options on the material that will help them refine their search to just focus on silk saris, right? So at the end, uh, our search is not very effective if we can't return to customers the exact type of product they want. So if somebody wants a pure silk sari, our aim is to provide the customer uh, pure silk saris in search results, right? So. Uh, now, there may be m some reasons why we may not be providing pure silk saris. Maybe we don't have selection of pure silk saris, right? But if, if there is somebody with, uh, you know, if we have products with pure silk saris and somebody has expressed that intent, then our search engine will, uh, you know, algorithmically try to show pure silk saris. And I can talk to you offline. If, if that's not happening, you can let me know, and that's something that we'll look into. Uh, uh, the second point was on abuse. Uh, you're right, uh, th that happens. People buy an iPhone and then return some fake, cheap phone. Uh, so that's happening across the board. It's not just happening in silk saris. And we use algorithms. I haven't talked about them, but a big focus of us is to try and find those abusive customers and get them out of Amazon so that they're not customers here and in many cases we even file police cases against people who are doing fraud and abuse on our platform. But the first question is quite, quite relevant. So whenever you write silk, I'm interested to buy pure silk products. But it doesn't come at all, the pure silk products. Definitely. I want to uh, see that use case. Why and, not? Uh, yeah, well, I, I'm, I'm happy to look into it. I if that's I not happening, we'll, that's, we'll a, that's a problem. take the discussion yeah. offline because okay, I think okay, there are more you. questions here. Pavitra, yes. When you say pure silk, a kg of silk is anything almost to 7,000 today. And you're selling silk saris for 600. This is misleading and I think it's wrong information for the customer. I think you're misleading customers and I think that's r really wrong. You know, because you cannot, it, instead you can write it's a power loom polyester sari. Why do you use saying silk saris just to get an extra sale? I think it's absolutely So a lot of these products are uh, are listed by sellers so if they are uh, misleading yeah, then customers then up to you to then uh, we have out. to police that no of add course to that, yeah. add to that uh, I have an I'll just add on to what Pavitra was talking about uh, we per, I work in that uh, handloom sector space Savita can you just introduce us like yeah, Savita I'm Savita yeah. uh, I work in the handloom space and I think we'll talk about that a little later uh, I have an issue with how Amazon sells saris, especially the mislabeling and the misrepresentation. And I get that you're going by what uh, the seller is putting there. Uh, my issue has been that we cannot report these to Amazon because I'm, it has to be an Amazon verified uh, buyer who can report that product for me to review it. We found that in most of these cases, it's a violation of the law of the land. You cannot call something kalamkari when it is not kalamkari. You cannot call it Bhagalpuri silk because it is not Bhagalpuri silk. At 299, it definitely is not. It violates the law of the land and it's misleading, it's misrepresenting. So I think there are a lot of legal issues that come up when you're selling saris and we've been sure. tracking that very closely on Amazon. And we haven't found a way of addressing this to you all directly. I'm hoping to have an offline conversation with you on this. Sure, yeah. yeah. Uh, thank no, you so uh, 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 these are some of the problems when you run a marketplace. There are abusive customers, there are abusive sellers who misrepresent the products. Uh, and, you know, that's a big focus of what these online and e commerce platforms uh, do. They try to uh, make sure that uh, it's trustworthy, customers can trust what they get, there aren't fakes, there aren't counterfeits, and so on. So, in your case, I think the example you're giving. It looks like those could be fakes. They're not it is genuine. Fake. It uh, is fake. It uh, is fake. There's so, no doubt. So by our it. policy, <laughs> those sellers should be thrown out of our platform, right? Absolutely. And 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 that's that's uh, that's what ML algorithms and AI algorithms do. They try to identify counterfeit products, counterfeit sellers. Now with you know close to a billion products, some of these may slip by. But if it's a prevalent problem in silk, 
saris and so on, then we will we should increase our scrutiny on that to make sure that fakes and counterfeits aren't sold on the platform. Excellent. I think there's there's now a lot of dialogues for discussion. I'm sorry, we really have to rush um, uh, because uh, we're running a bit late. And uh, this is this is why we are having this conversation here today so that you know who you have to go and catch and ha and have this uh, uh, conversation. And I think it would also be uh, valuable for Amazon to get inputs sure. from people who are in the design field and who are really working towards uh, uh, you know the craftsmen uh, craftsmanships and uh, the uh, to help the artisans and to give value to them. So thank you, Rajiv, uh, to for this uh, really really wonderful talk. We move to big things. Big things with an X, not a G. And that's uh, Chandralika and Shivang Desai walking right up here to talk about what they do with fashion, the digitalized fashion.